Trinity. Trinity and Trinity. Children. 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 Yes, abide in Christ. We are so grateful to God for another Sunday to sit at his feet in our homes. I am very, very excited this morning to come your way with service. If you are joining us for the very first time, this is the children's ministry of the Trinity United Church. Our church is located within the Trinity Theological Seminary Campus, Lagos. Children, you know I'll tell you to call your friends, to tell them service has started, to go for your Bibles, your hymn books, and today you need your Presby hymn book, your notebooks, your pens if you use pens, and your pencils if you use pencils. We begin this service in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll continue by reading a word from John chapter 17, and I'm reading from verse 19 to 21. John 17, I'm reading from verse 19 to 21. Let us hear the word of God. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Amen. We shall enter into a time of prayer. Close your eyes. This is not a time to watch me. Close your eyes. Focus on God. Indeed, Jesus is the head of the church. He is worthy of all our adoration. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, worthy of all our adoration. Worship his holy name. Praise his mighty name. Open to PH 420 as we prayerfully sing along with me, Okai. PH 420. Asa fosi newo yen Yesu ye ye wo ma na beji ye o gai ke fo. Yeah, who he are, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 but I won't Because of our sins, 
we are not worthy to come before God. But because of his grace and his mercy, yes, he receives us. And so we can come before him, even as we have come this morning. And we know that even as we confess our sins to him, he will cleanse us. Yes, he will cleanse us. Yes. No do so na wo re ma wo bi se da. Indeed, on ma wo bi en se da. Se ye kache ni se ya ye bone on fan che ye o de be che ye. If we confess our sins because of His grace and His mercy, He will cleanse us and He will remember. Our sins no more. Tell him you are sorry. Tell him you are sorry. Commit this service into the hands of the Almighty. Tell him you want to learn something to help you live and abide in Christ. Shall we pray? Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you, we exalt your mighty name. We thank you for you are God. You alone are God. There is none like unto thee. We thank you for your grace and mercy that even us, day in, day out, you forgive our sins and receive us at your feet in fellowship. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will come and take absolute control of this service. Spirit of the living God, take absolute control of this service. Minister to our hearts. In Jesus' name, have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Great. As you know already, the theme for this month is the church in history. And our topic for today is the Presbyterian Church. And so today we are doing all Presby hymns. Even the under five song, which we all know is actually a Presby children's hymn. And so under fives, are you ready? Auntie Kisha is bringing your word to you. Primary and secondary, Mama Julia is bringing your message to you. Did I say secondary? Great. Primary and JHS or seniors. Mama Julia is bringing your message to you. And we will understand, as I said, next week, when we do Trinity, we will understand why we are in Trinity United Church. And we have done Methodist Church last week. I hope you learned a lot. And we are doing the Presby Church this week. So sit, take your notebooks because you need to write a lot. Auntie Kisha, we are ready. Children, abide in Christ. We thank God for another Sunday to come to you in your very soon. Thank you, Auntie. Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Gracious and everlasting Father, we thank you once again for today, for time in your presence. We pray that you dwell amongst us so that at the end of this service we'll be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Children, abide in Christ. Yes, we are going to sing this very common song after that we continue with our service. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong, yes Jesus loves me, yes. Yes, Jesus. 
very good. Today we are going to look at our theme for today. Our theme is the church in history and we are looking at the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. Very good. Our memory verse for today is John chapter 17 verse 21a. It goes like this, that they all may be one as you father are in me and I in you. John 17 21a. Amen. Amen. Very good. As I said, we are talking about the Presbyterian Church. So we are going to look at how the church started in the whole world. The Presbyterian Church traces its roots to the Church of Scotland. Presbyterianism was influenced by John Calvin, a French theologian. He was born on July 10th, 1509 in Noyon, France. When we say Protestant, a Protestant means a member or a follower of any of the Western Christian Church that is separate from the Roman Catholic Church. The Presbyterian Church is a mainline Protestant Church. This includes the Baptist Church, the Methodist, and as I said, the Presbyterian and what Anglican churches. Do you understand? The first Basel mission, how it started in Ghana. The first Basel missionaries came to Ghana in 1828. They arrived at Osu. Yes, they were four in number. They came one week to Christmas and two weeks to the end of the year. They had come with the aim or the motive to spread the good news about the birth of Christ. That's why they came to witness about Christ. And the second group came in 1832, including Reverend Andreas Ruiz. The first group came, but they, they died because of our weather conditions and some of them felt sick and they died. So they couldn't spend so much time. They spent about eight months and in their eight months, they influenced a lot of people, a few people, all right, but it went very far to do a lot of good. So when the second group of missionaries came, they came to continue with what the first group had done. The second group also died leaving Reverend Andreas Reese. Now let's look at Reverend Andreas Reese's childhood. He was born on 12th January 1804 in a small Christian town along the German-Danish border. His town had people who had interest in missionary work, that is the word of God, or spreading the gospel. And his father was Andreas Peterson Reese and mother Anna Maria Philipson. His father was a farm owner and a window maker. Andreas Reeves in his teenage days was an apprentice in his father's workshop. He was helping his father. He worked under his father. He was learning. Let's look at Reverend Andreas Reeves' youth. According to himself, he had a bad behavior. He was doing naughty things in his youth. He later had an evangelical call and experience with which made him decide to be a Christian. So he later had a call of God upon his life. He decided to give his life to Christ and become a Christian. He applied to a Basel Mission Seminary in Switzerland and studied for five years after which he was made what? A Reverend Minister. Let's look at his commitment when he came to Ghana. He was committed to the church that he did not want to abandon it. He took a bold decision in the face of much frustration, trouble, and possible death to move from Osu to Ekropon in the year 1835 for a colder weather. People were dying. That was a time which the missionaries had died and some were falling sick and some decided to give up and all that. But he took a bold decision. He did very well by doing that. He decided to spread the gospel to the Achim and other areas before returning to Basel in 1840. We are, the African missionaries from Jamaica, Reverend Andreas Reese, however, went to get some African missionaries, blacks, from Jamaica. He arrived with 25 of them. And... It was 17th April 1843 to Osu and Ekropon a week after. They saw themselves as Joseph's being sold into slavery to come back and help. Had it not been for these Jamaicans 
who came to Ghana, the missionaries, the President Church of Ghana wouldn't have gone far. They dedicated themselves, they committed themselves to spread the gospel. They did so well. Had it not been then, this Presbyterian Church of Ghana we see wouldn't have grounded or come into existence. The struggle within the Within 1843 to 1845 were crucial years during which their commitment and endurance were fully tested. They were dying, no missionaries who had come, some were dying, some were falling sick, malaria, the weather wasn't favorable for them. So they were tired, they, some even gave up. Some fell sick, others died, still no convert to the gospel. Some of these black missionaries left out of frustration, they left. They were tired, but few were dedicated to spread the gospel. Others, however, held the vision of building a strong Christian community. And they had their breakthrough finally. If you work hard, you get a breakthrough. God comes alive for you. Do you understand? So their breakthrough was their first baptism, performed in 1847. A seminary was established the following year after the baptism to train locals. Who had believed and availed themselves to be used by God to spread the gospel from this point there was no turning back the spread of the church in Ghana before long the Basel mission spread reaching into the Ekwapim towns and beyond into the Achim, Krobo and Akuna areas within a decade that is 10 years of arrival of the Jamaicans a Basel mission church had come into existence and by the end of the second decade, it has spread through Enum, the Volta Biom areas, and also through Abokobi. Abokobi is a town owned by the Presbyterian Church because the missionaries bought a land for the church there. And it is therefore the only town in Ghana whose chief is elected in the church. The Presbyterian Church is in every region of this country and is still spreading to date. So this is how people sacrificed themselves, dedicated themselves to spread the good news, to spread the gospel and make the Presbyterian Church of Ghana go far. We are learning that as children of God and as Christians, we have to do our best. We have to persevere no matter how hard it is. We should pray to God to give us strength to do his work. Do you understand? Very good. We are going to pray and thank God for his word that has come to us and helping us learn about the history of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. When I started, you saw the logo up there. That is the logo, and their motto is what? That they may, that they may all be one. Yes. So whenever you see that logo, it tells you about who the Presbyterian Church. It identifies us as what? Presbyterians. Very good. We are going to sing our last song. Then we pray. And pray.
for a time in his presence. I'll hand over to Auntie Julie. Let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Gracious and everlasting Father, we thank you for your word that has come to us, teaching us about the history of our church and people who committed and dedicated themselves to your work. We pray that you help us as children as we are growing, help us to commit ourselves to you, commit our lives to you and to our church. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll come your way the same time next week. Bye. The Bible Songs Sunday like this and want to say a very big thank you to Auntie Kisha for taking us with through the primary class. This morning our topic is the Presbyterian Church and as we know the theme for the month is the church in history. The church in history. We thank God that last week we looked at the Methodist Church and today we are looking at the Presbyterian Church. Our Bible test for this morning is Psalm 19, 7 to 10. Psalm 19, 7 to 10. Please, for time constraints, I would encourage you to take your time and read. It is so very lovely. God bless you. Our memory verse for the day is Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we go into the history, I would like us to take a look at some few elements that we need to know and so that when someone asks us what does our logo signifies, we should be able to say it. 
St. Andrew's Cross, the white on the blue background represents the Scottish mission, the Scottish mission. The Swiss flag represents the Switzerland mission. And then the palm tree signifies Africa's contribution to the church. And our mission or vision, which sometimes is referred to as a motto, says that that they all may be one. They all may be one. So you see this one in our logo and you should be able to explain it to anyone um, that um, asks you what our logo represents. Again, we have some greetings um, and I would like you to take a look at it. The greetings for the Presbyterian Church, we have various greetings in the various groupings, but the greetings for the Presbyterian Church in English is the peace of the Lord be with you. And then you respond and also with you. The tree goes like this. Asumwe enka wonso. Then the response is enka wonso. Asumwe enka And then the response is enka wonso. Before we continue, I would like us to sing um, our Presby hymn 282. Our Presby hymn 282. A dance for a word I know. See your eye for no one. Namba wasa for I was em kam. Ma wonfa nam ishiata for dom. Namba church. Now, how the church started globally? How the church started globally? The Presbyterian Church traces its roots to the Church of Scotland. Presbyterianism was influenced by John Calvin, a French theologian. He was born on July 10th, 1509, in Loyo, France. The Presbyterian Church is a mainline Protestant church. Protestant means a member or follower of any of the Western Christian churches that is separate from the Roman Catholic Church. This includes the Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, and many others. 
Now let's look at the arrival of the missionaries in Gold Coast, now called Ghana. In 1828, the Presbyterian Church of the then Gold Coast received its first missionary from Basel in Switzerland. Their mission was to make an impact on Africa by teaching the word of God. The missionaries were instructed to be humble and show respect to the people. After 12 years of missionary work, eight missionaries had died and there was not a single convert. Their death were attributed to malaria. The first missionaries came from Basel in Switzerland and interacted with the people from Osu and started learning the Ghan language. They then moved to the Krokon Equiapem where they also learned the tree language. The mission went in the Krokon. When they were in a Krokon and did not make any convert after 12 years, the Ukrapim Hine at the time, Nana Abdanpa the first, said something which had a profound effect on the mission. And I quote, When God created the world, he made a book for the white and Obosom idol. For the Africans. So if you could show me some Africans who can read the white man's book, then we will follow you." Unquote. The missionaries did not take this message lightly. So on the 17th of April 1943, other African descendants from Jamaica and the Caribbean landed in Osu to begin another phase of the Basel Mission Evangelism work. It was to convince the people of the Gold Coast that Christian religion was not only for the Europeans. They were also perceived to withstand the tropical climate more than the Europeans who were easily attacked by malaria. Missionaries from Jamaica, the West Indies missionaries arrived in the country with 25 members at the Christian Bob Castle on the 17th of April, 1843. The group continued to Krokon, which became the center of the Basel Mission's work. The West Indians introduced mangoes, cocoa, avocado pear, groundnut oil, and many others. The Lord blessed their mission, and soon schools were started in Ukrapon and other parts of the country like Ebri, Latte, Abokobi, Chebi, Yendi, Salaga, and many other places. The Presbyterian Training College, now called Presbyterian College of Education, was started in 1948 and played a key role in the growth of the church. Now we know that there was a struggle. The years 1943 and 1945 were crucial years during which their commitments and endurance were fully tested. It was not easy for the missionaries. Some fell sick, others died, and 
people were not ready to receive their gospel. Some missionaries left out of frustration, but others held a vision of building a strong Christian community and eventually achieved a breakthrough, which was the first Baptist. The first Baptist performed in 1847. We had some missionaries. We have some seminaries. After the first baptism in 1847, a seminary was established the following year, 1848, to train locals who had believed and availed themselves to be used by God to spread the gospel. From this point, there was no turning back. Praise be to God. I would want us to consider some groupings in the now Presbyterian Church. We have the Young Adults Fellowship, YAF, Young People's Guild, YPG, Junior Youth, JY, Children's Service, Presbyterian Men's Fellowship, Bible Studies and Prayer Group, Presby Singing Band, Presby Women's Fellowship, and the Church Choir. I would also want us to take note of some missionaries, some notable missionaries. We have Reverend Andreas Ritz. Reverend Andreas Ritz was committed to the church, so he did not want to abandon it. He took a bold decision in the face of much frustration and possible death to move from Osu to Ukokon. To make a new attempt, he decided to spread the gospel to Achim and other areas before returning to Basel in 1840. It is, however, important to know that there were others, other missionaries who helped with the little they could to spread the gospel. We have Johannes Zimmerman. Johannes Zimmerman translated the Bible into Ga by 1866. We have Johann Gottlieb Christella. He also translated the Bible into three by 1870. We thank God for the lives of all these people. The time they spent has really been a blessing to all of us. So what lessons have we drawn from this, as members, we must be focused because the Basel mission did not give up. Their goal was to ensure that they would get others to follow Christ. They had a listening year. They listened to the advice of the Almighty here. And so we must also pay attention to good advice. They sacrificed their lives for the work of God. Some held on until they, they died. Others ensured that the mission would be accomplished. And there were a lot of sacrifices. Leaving their comfort zone, coming here was not for fun. But they knew what they were looking for. They knew what they were about. They knew the joy they had. So they wanted to share. And we thank God for their life. Irrespective of the slave trade and everything that was going on. They came to proclaim the good news. They were enterprising. So they did what? They planted food items, cocoa yam, cocoa, groundnuts, turning it into groundnut oil, 
they, they, they were teaching, they really taught us. And, and the schools were spread. We, we thank God for their lives. They were committed irrespective of challenges and difficulties they face. So commitment with excellence is very great for all of us. We want to bless the Lord for giving us another opportunity to study where we have come from. We bless the Lord for the day and I want to encourage you to go on the internet and find, read the full history of the Presbyterian Church and you will enjoy it. Shalom. God bless you. Shall we please pray? Father, we want to thank you for your goodness, for your mercies, for your great work you did for us. Having gone on the cross to die for us, you also influenced others to come all the way from UK to come and also influence us to follow you. We are praying, O oh Lord, that the good work that they started, we will continue and will, grant, will be granted and also help others to be grounded in your word. And because your word will lead us into good morals, we want to bless you and thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. I will thank I will now hand over to Auntie Bridget for the announcement. Shalom, shalom, stay blessed. you have. Thank you very much Auntie Kisha and Auntie Julie for blessing our lives this morning. I'm sure you have learned a lot of things you didn't know about the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. I am sure by now you know that Presby is the short form of Presbyterian Church of Ghana. Yes, Thank you very much, teachers, for blessing us today. 
children i am sure you also saw that the moderator of the presbyterian church that means the whole ghana the head of the presbyterian church is our own right reverend professor joy mante i'm sure you remember him from trinity yes trinity great so under fives and primaries and seniors all of us i am sure we shall continue to tell our friends about christ let us not think about our comfort let us remember that the missionaries forfeited their comfort they let their comfort go they 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 gave up their comfort to bring the gospel to us and today you and i are also christians let us listen to the following announcements and observe them as you know i'll continue telling you to study yes continue to study jhs3 students as you go to school remember to stay safe always have your mask on do not take your mask off to talk if you talk and somebody does not hear speak out speak louder don't take the mask off when you do that you put yourself and your friends at risk let us adhere to all the protocols enhanced hygiene wash your hands with soap and running water very very often and then when you don't have soap and water available you use your sanitizer also remember two arms length social distancing let us keep safe and until we have washed our hands or sanitized we do not touch our mouth our eyes or our nose let us keep safe and children let us all continue to remember them in our prayers when we pray let's remember our brothers and sisters in jhs3 your memory verses continue to learn them we have sung a lot of presby hymns today and we will finish with another one remember to go back and learn them if you do not know how to sing them and so at this point birthday boys and girls if you celebrated your birthday this week or even if today is your birthday up 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 on your feet mommy daddy Everybody there, help me sing happy birthday to our brothers and sisters. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you now. May God bless you. And so remember to tell mommy, daddy, you want to give your offertory via mobile money. We have come to the end of our service. Next week is going to be Trinity United Church. Yes, the church in history next week is going to be the trinity united church you don't want to miss this one you need to know your history we said last week that every church that has a history has a future and so close your eyes let's say our closing prayer close your eyes our lord and heavenly father we thank you that you have sent your children to bring your word to us sacrificing a lot some also even sacrificing 
their lives. Father, we pray that as children, we will learn to leave our comfort and do your work. We will learn to sacrifice to do your work because we know that at the end of the day, there shall be many, many blessings that will be ours. Father, we commit our week into your hands. We commit our JHS3 students into your hands. Father, all those who celebrated their birthday this week, we bring them before you. We thank you for their lives. We thank you for adding another year to their age. Father, we pray that you continue to guard, guide, and protect them. Father, protect us all as we go through this week. And we pray that when we come together, Again, next week, we shall be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. We thank you in Jesus' name. Have we prayed with thanksgiving? Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore amen and so till we come your way again next week be good stay safe and let's join the choir to sing ph276 it says that asema yikure muni eye yesu christo stay safe bye